Hey guys, Mr. Cooney here, and we are looking at <clears throat> grammar lesson 19, uh, the second type of phrase we're going to learn this year. So we did prepositional phrases last week, and we're looking at participles, participial phrases, uh, and a variation on that called absolute phrases this week. starts to get a little more tricky now. You probably don't know what one is maybe necessarily off the top of your head. So uh, in general, a participle is a verb form that can function as an adjective, okay? So you take a verb, you're somehow using it as an adjective. It doesn't sound like it would make sense, but you use them all the time. Uh, therefore, it modifies a noun or a pronoun, okay? Be a blooming plant sat in the desk. Now, if you think of it, although a bloom itself can be a noun, uh, if you see the word blooming, you would usually think of that as a verb, right? It's something that something's doing, but you can turn an action into a description by putting it uh, right before a noun and uh, modifying that, and you, you do that all the time, right? Uh, so that's a participle. Uh, a participial phrase has more to it. So that's just a participle. It's just one word, right? Um, present participles in an ing, past participles in an ed. So all participles end in one or the other of those things. It cannot just be the regular form of the verb. Okay. Although there are other forms, many familiar adjectives are in fact past participles. You just don't think about it. In the driving snow, you can say something like that, right? The pouring rain, the handwritten text. Those are actually verbs turned into adjectives, right? Okay, so when a participle is part of a verb phrase, it does not function as an adjective. Okay, so that doesn't mean that every ed or ing verb that we run into is a participle. Most of the time, those are just verbs being verbs, right? Um, the baked chicken is ready to eat, okay? That functions as an adjective, right? The chicken has been baked. Now, that's just the verb of the sentence. It's a verb being a verb, right? Like Mr. Cooney being Mr. Cooney, a big jerk. All right, so participle with its complements and modifiers is called a participial phrase, okay? It can, participial phrase that begins a sentence is usually followed by a comma. Participial phrase that appears in the middle or the end of the sentence is set up by commas only if it is not essential, inessential to the meaning of the sentence. Examples, charging with all his might. See how that, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to learn because Something that's going to enhance your writing and get you closer to that sophistication point is if you vary your sentence structure enough where it is uh, not monotonous, not redundant, but uh, has a, a rhythm to it that changes through different structures, right? So instead of starting, if you're writing an essay about Hamlet, for instance, you want to be, we talked about this before, you don't want to start every sentence with Hamlet or he, right? If you get a nice descriptive participial phrase in the beginning of a sentence, and then the quarterback in this, in this instance, and we're not just saying the quarterback over and over again, it doesn't become, you know, monotonous. Um, the quarterback spoiler the number 12 is my sister. That's essential, right, to the sentence. So it's not set off by commas. My sister playing for the home team never misses a football game. We would call that um, non-essential as in it's just extra information. Okay, you could still say my sister never misses a football game. Okay. All right, that's kind of a judgment call, but that's the general rule. So exercise one, we have 15 items. Let's do 10 of them. Underline each participle or participial phrase or verb phrase, right? Adjective, it function as an adjective or a V, if it functions as a verb. So you're gonna find all of them, but all right, which ones are participles, right? ADJ, if it functions as an adjective. In other words, that's a participle, right? Or V, if it functions as a verb, that's a verb being a verb. A soaring bird is a glorious sight. Okay, let's look at one more. We collected used clothing for the local American Red Cross Drive. All right, we collected. That's just a verb right there, right? That's what we're doing. But used, that's not really an action there. It's describing the clothing, right? So collected, that's a verb, V, right? Here, used, that's an adjective. In other words, a participle, a past participle. Right? Okay, then this is really tricky here. Um, an absolute phrase consists of uh, a noun or a pronoun that is modified by a participle or participial phrase, phrase but has no grammatical connection to the rest of the sentence. So computers haven't become common or the race being over. It's kind of like you're sticking a noun or a pronoun onto the front of a participial phrase, okay? So you could write, having told her first story, her mentor decided to throw the party and that would just be a participle, this part, right? I can't highlight it, I don't know why. Um, that would just be a participial phrase describing the mentor, right? But if we want to get something else descriptive in that it's still referring to her, we could stick this on the front of it. Now we have an absolute phrase. The young writer having sold her first story, comma, her mentor decided to throw her a party, okay? It's a good, concise way of packing a lot of meaning and description into one sentence. So you want to find each absolute phrase 
the adventurer, having just climbed Mount Everest, his book became a bestseller. You can probably tell easily that that is the one there, right? All right. Hopefully you get the idea. Let's do 10 of those two. So 10 and 10. Do later this week. All righty. Bye-bye.